Have you ever had just something in your life you just can't get over and someone says, get over it? Well, today we're going to help you do just that because it's National Get Over It Day. People everywhere are encouraged to self-reflect and move on from whatever it is that's weighing them down. Joining us to help us is our friend, Dr. Jeff Gardere. Good morning. It's so fantastic to see you. I can't get over how great your skin looks. So oh, uh, thank maybe, you. maybe you can help me with that. Well, I'm just trying to get over it uh, <laughs> with regard to uh, making sure that I put on my skin cream and defoliate and all, all those that. things uh, that my wife has been asking me to do forever. Excellent. Thank you. It's always great to see you. And I know you bring such a wonderful perspective uh, to, to a broad spectrum of topics. But today we're talking about things we can't get over. A lot of different things that people can't get over. But this day was created after those who can't get over a failed relationship. So mm. what advice do you have for those who can't get over a breakup or a failed marriage? So we're starting at the genesis of this quote unquote holiday. Exactly. It's uh, it's really about uh, an obsessive compulsive uh, being stuck in a ritual of uh, of obsessing about a relationship. And then after a while, what happens, Marisol, is it begins to become poisonous and toxic in your system. And then it affects every relationship thereafter. So you just have to get over it and learn from that relationship so that you can do better in your next relationship. Cut it off. Let it go. You've learned from it. Time to move on. That's right. You know, I've, I've spoken to, to many friends who are like, I can't believe this is happening to me over a failed relationship. And I say, instead of thinking it that way, think about what am I learning from this relationship, which is really hard to do. But to your point, I think it helps you not take all that toxic stuff with you to your next situation. Um, what do you, and this came up a lot, um, what do you say to those of us who can't get over a death of a loved one? Mm. Well, you have to remember uh, that that person who you have lost was very special in your life and continues to be. And even though physically they are no longer with you, their memories can still stay with you. You could still celebrate who uh, this uh, individual uh, uh, happened to have been. And I am sure that they would want you to go on living and live life to your fullest. That is a tribute to them. They would want you to be happy. Right. I like this one. So I want to dive into this topic got all of us really talking and we all sort of brought to the table things we can't get over. So mine is I can't get over um, being let go of a job. Some people think that it's a television job and it is not. I cannot get over the fact that when I was 21 years old, I got fired from the community bookstore on 7th Avenue in Park Slope, Brooklyn before my first day on the job. They hired me and then they fired me. They left a message on my answering machine and I can't get over it to this day. Well, all I would say to you is congratulations <laughs> that they fired you because that old saying, as one door closes, another door opens. It was something that was very special to you. It taught you about disappointment, but it also taught you about moving on, which you've done very, very well. So Marisol, get over it. Oh, fine, fine. <laughs> and by the way, that bookstore is still there. I went yeah. in. I went in a couple of Let's years ago. Let's go back. I'm going to take you. You back. should do the go pretty in. woman thing. Walk in and go. Big mistake. Yeah, exactly. Big, big mistake. Exactly. Just knock the books over. <laughs> right, right. So I want to go to our team. Uh, we want to start with Dan. What can what can you not get over? Say your so, name. State your name. Hi, yeah. I'm Dan. Um, and. <laughs> My long time can't get over it, doctor, is I cannot get over it when people will not admit that they are wrong. Oh, that's tough. And mm. so this has been a plague of mine since I've been in elementary school. I have to fight it out each and every time instead of just saying, you know what, have a great day. And I have to fight it back and then it becomes a very ugly conversation because I have to let them know that they were wrong. Mm -hmm. Dan, you and I have known each other for a very long time, and one of the things I know about you is that you are an empath, and you try to be not only responsible for yourself, but for everyone else, and that's what makes you special. But you can't do it to the point, Dan, where now you are owning uh, a person's fault, mm. where they can't move on because they just can't seem to let go of something or take responsibility for it. So don't own their stuff. If they can't admit they're wrong, it's their 
issue, at least you know what to do. You can give them a gentle reminder, and then you can move on. And so, Dan, get over it. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Well said. Ah, uh, doctor, love you. That was I great. Love it. Okay, Ben. I posted you're about next. this recently. Uh, it drives me nuts. I am a one guy with a camera, and I have to come up with all my ideas on my own. And then when I see my ideas on like a late night show, like a month after, like exact idea. Coincidentally, on a late night show or a big commercial, these guys have a hundred writers and millions of dollars, and they just were ripping off my stuff. It drives me absolutely insane, and it's happened over the last ten years. Well, Ben, what this is is a validation of the fact that you are on the pulse, you are on the money, you know what's going on, your ideas are new, they're innovative, and therefore people want to borrow them. Uh, so just get over it, Ben, the fact that you are a genius. <laughs> I'm not, That's yeah. right. I'm not okay. making that Fallon money, though. That's the problem. Get You're over. at the forefront, Ben. I don't got that Jimmy Fallon paycheck, unfortunately. Unbelievable. Well, Maybe speaking, one day, though. Yeah, yeah one speaking, day. speaking of money and paychecks, Betty's involves... <sighs> A oh, lot of a money. Would be, a would-be million dollars. Uh, okay, so doctor, my name is Betty, and I still cannot get over the fact that I was one number away Oof. from winning $190 million in the lottery. Just one number. And Betty, I get up I every day to and go to work, Dr. You Jeff. of people who have won the lottery and their lives has gone <laughs> right down the <laughs> tubes. They are unhappy. They end up it's broke. True. They end up yeah. losing their families. You have a wonderful family, an incredible job, incredible fans. Get over that one number <laughs> and know that you won the lottery of life. Rich in love. Lottery of life. I like that. <laughs> I love it. Get to work next to I me know. every day. Isn't that Tell a, isn't that a prize enough? Pot goes off, Pay Dr. Your Jeff. Rent with oh, love. oh goodness. <laughs> Dr. Jeff, once again, thank you so much for your wisdom and your humor. We love you. We can't wait to do this like yeah, this here. Is good. Yeah, this we is good. Or, or from your sunroom. It's yeah, really. I know, right? Fancy. Fantastic. <laughs> Look forward to it. Thank you, All Dr. Right, Jeff. Thanks.